Pro AI, and Newmark DJ to go to touch walkthrough. I'm DJ Spiegelspin, and in this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about this amazing must have controller. So if you've watched some of my other videos, you will know that this controller is one of my favorite controllers and there are several reasons why. Number one is the price. It's only uh, $89 at the moment, I believe. There'll be a link down below to get one at the cheapest price. So let's get into this. Uh, first thing I want to show you is how to plug it in to your iPad. So this controller is a compact professional controller that is great for small parties, barbecues, and stuff like that. And it's also great to have as a backup controller or maybe to use while you're traveling and maybe on an airplane or, or something, or if you're staying in a hotel and you wanna practice your DJing, this controller is great. So to plug it in, we're gonna need a couple of things. So this is the case that I have. I recommend getting a case like this because it has a pocket in here and now you could put all the wires that you need so if you plan to go DJing you just grab this grab your iPad and grab your speakers and you're good to go ready to DJ at a moment's notice so reaching in here let's see what we have this is the cable that comes with the controller so if you look at it it is a USB like a regular USB and then it's the smaller USB so how it gets plugged in is like this. This end is going to go over here. So that's plugged into there. And then we're going to plug this end into our iPad, but there's a problem. The iPad has a USB-C connection if you're using the iPad Pro or the newer iPads. and this wire will not plug in. So when I first got this controller, it finally got delivered and then I went and then I went to I went to use it and I was really frustrated and then had to go out and get an additional adapter. So to avoid doing that, get yourself one of these. This is a USB-C dongle they call it and it has USB-C connection here and then this particular one has 3 USB ports. I would recommend getting one with multiple USB ports because with DJ Pro AI, you could have more than one controller plugged in. So you could use different controllers at the same time for different things, which is really cool. But you're going to plug one of the USBs into here. And then now this goes into the iPad. And this specific one has a HDMI port. So you could do video mixing while using your controller which I think in 2022 and 2023 is a must have to make your sets really stand out. All right, so we are going to plug this in. Boom. Now the controller is plugged in. And then if you look at the screen, it is functional just like that. It takes two seconds to plug it in and you could start mixing like that. Now this controller has touch sensitive jog wheels. That's the difference between the DJ to go to touch and then just the regular DJ to go. So touch act activated jog wheels. What this does is if you touch the top, you could scratch. And then if you move the sides, you can, you can nudge the track. So, so just like with professional club style CDJs, it's the same thing. And with bigger controllers, if you touch the side of it, you can nudge the track, which is equivalent to pressing these plus press and minus buttons down here. If you look by where the jog wheel is over here, plus and minus, it's going to either speed up or slow down the track. That's why when you see DJs beat max matching, they're kind of moving the platters up around like that. And it looks kind of cool. That's what they're doing. So, when you're manual beat matching, you could use the sides. And then if you want to scratch, or if you want to cut, if you want to throw on a backspin, you could do that with the top of the platter. So this controller, because of its size, has limited, limited buttons and knobs, obviously. But when you're DJing with the iPad, don't forget that the iPad is an extension to your controller. So set up your iPad in a way that the controller is there and then the iPad, could you could reach it right away by using uh, different types of 
of iPad stands or however you're gonna have it set up so that the buttons and the features that you can't use on the controller, you could use on the touch screens. And now a lot of the new controllers, especially the all-in-one controllers, they all are, they all have screens on them. So just think of it as a controller with a big screen by using the iPad. That's why I like DJing with the iPad better than the laptop because then you don't have to use a mouse and a keyboard and all that. You could just go and do your mixing with the iPad. So let's talk about the buttons that it does have. So first of all, we got these pads. We have four pads on each side. Now DJ Pro has in their update, they made it so we could see the cue points, the, the color coded cue points with the, with the controller. And then it'll change the color on the controller. But that's only if the controller supports it. So this one, all of the cue points are just red. So you're not gonna get that color coded RGB feature that you would get with other controllers. The controller I have back there, which is the Reloop Buddy, it does have colored buttons, but this one does not. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but if that was something you're looking for, this controller doesn't have it. So this controller has what's has one of these buttons over here called pad mode. So what pad mode does is it's going to switch the modes. So in this mode, we got cue points. You could see how it has three of those cue points lit up. That represents these three cue points over here. So if I touch this cue point number two, we're at the end of the song. And now let's just bring it back. Cue point number two, boom, we're at the end of the song. So it's good cue points, hot cues are very important. And then you have up to four. Bigger controllers have, have eight, but we can make do with four most of the time. Now, the next thing we could do is auto button. Now what this is going to do is it's going to set an auto loop. So if you look up there where the looper is right here, we are setting auto loops. So either one, two, four, and eight. So if you want to quickly set an auto loop, have it switched to auto mode, and then you could just press the buttons there. The next is manual loop, which is going, which is, is pretty self-explanatory. You are going to have a manual loop. And then the next one is going to be samples. So this one is really cool. Whichever sample you have set would will be played through will be played through the controller. I mean through your speakers. And now next we got obviously we have we have sync, play, and cue. So the Q button is gonna set a temporary cue point. It's going to do the same thing as pressing this Q button down here, right next to set. Next we got a pretty good crossfader. Now it's a small crossfader, but when I use controllers with the DJ Pro AI app, I always have it set up the crossfader cutting mode. So if you see over here, if I move it slightly to one side, it either cuts to the middle, all the way to the left or all the way to the right. And it's really good for scratching and it's just a setting that I really like to use. And you could change that setting over here by going to general, and then I think MIDI devices, yeah, crossfader cutting mode. You could also invert the crossfader if that is something you're interested in. Next thing that we have is it's not very big and it's a little bit hard to use, but we still have it. And that is these BPM sliders. So if you're doing manual beat matching, manual BPM changes, you could use these. Now, uh, a cool idea that I like to do when I on some of the mappings for this controller is you can map these to be volume sliders. So if you're used to using volume sliders up and down instead of these kind of weird knobs, then you could do that. So speaking of the knobs, we have the only knobs on the controller are for the volume. So if we go over here and if you look, you'll see that this these knobs turn up and down the volume, kind of like a like a radio or something. So you could turn the volume up, you could turn the volume down. 
Now, this might bother some DJs, that, especially EDM, hip-hop DJs that are used to slamming up the volume faders and going up and down quick. You really can't do that. You have to turn them. That's why if, you're in, if you like to DJ with the sliders, then you could map these buttons. I'll show you guys how to map it at the end of the video. Now, next is these knobs. So this is the master volume. So obviously that controls the total volume of the controller. And then this is the Q level. So that, so that is how you could change the mix but that you hear in your headphones. So speaking of headphones, the biggest reason why I would get this controller, even if you love just DJing with the iPad alone, is being able to plug in your headphones. So if you're just using the iPad, you're gonna have to use multiple adapters just to get your headphones into, into the mix. But with this controller, with the built-in soundboard, we could just plug in our headphones like this. Headphones go on this side. And then our main output goes on this side. And it does not come with one of these cables. So make sure that when you're using, when you're, the cable that you're using is high quality, obviously, so you get the best possible sound quality. Now, this is plugged into our speaker. I'm using this small Bluetooth speaker. You could use any speaker you want. As long as it is hardwired, you, you cannot use a Bluetooth speaker at the moment because it's not going to work. There's going to be latency and then you're not going to be able to use the headphones. So now we got headphones and we got our main output. And we're good to go. So with the main volume controller, we'll be able to control the main volume, which will be the equivalent as just changing the volume with these buttons on your iPad or by using the, the volume changer over here. But when you have the controller plugged in, it locks the volume. So I cannot change the volume like I would normally if the controller was not plugged in. All right, so I think we covered every button except for these headphone buttons. So these headphone buttons over here, you could either set the headphones to the left side or set them to the right, right side, deck A or deck B. Now, I don't believe those are necessary because with DJ Pro AI, it automatically changes where the headphone settings are by where the crossfader is. So those buttons are a great opportunity to add in effects or whatever you want to add that complements your DJ style, whatever buttons you feel like are missing from this controller. So overall, the build quality is great. It feels kind of cold, kind of metal quality. And the knobs, the buttons, the jog wheels, everything works great. I've had this controller for multiple years and I still use it every day. And it is a must have whether you're going to use it for your main source or for a backup, or if you're just starting to get DJing and you want to get your hands on an actual controller, then this controller is awesome. So let me know in the comments if you guys use this controller. Let me know if you have any other questions. And if you found value in this video, give it a like and also subscribe to my channel. I make videos about all the new controllers and everything to do with DJing with the iPad and DJ Pro AI and the future of DJing. Thank you.